Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in his video. So we're gonna talk about something she doesn't care a whole lot about, comic book numbers, comic book publishers. We're gonna talk about IDW. We're gonna talk about this interview that they had in ICV2 where they're talking about how they wanna focus on creator-owned original content. And this is absolutely hilarious to me because they have spent years chasing Hollywood deals and chasing licensed books and trying very hard to hold on by their fingertips uh, as a publisher. Like they stopped being a, a serious comic book publisher several years ago. They thought that their, their ticket to ride was gonna be Hollywood, it was gonna be Netflix, and now that those deals are drying up, in part because of the writer's strike, in part because of you know, the content spend being uh, uh, curtailed at a lot of these streamers. Now IDW wants to be a comic book publisher once again, but it's definitely too little, too late. In fact, it sounds like they barely have enough money to keep going as is. And I'm gonna share with you some anecdotes, our experiences with IDW. I did freelance for IDW for, for a while. I worked on uh, mostly licensed books. That's what they did, but mostly Disney books. And I've said before, as IDW has been imploding in real time, that I personally never had a negative experience with them. The only problem I had, and you know, the people I worked with were great. I had no problem with any of the people I worked with. None of them, I, I think, are there anymore. I think uh, they've, they've all long, uh, long since left the company or got pushed out of the company or whatever because they lay people off like every freaking month over there. But uh, I never had a bad working relationship with them. The only problem I had, and this is going back to like 2014, 2015, the only problem I had was getting paid on time. Uh, it took months to get paid at IDW and uh, they would give you the runaround and you know, as to why they couldn't pay you right away or they'd be like, oh, so-and-so forgot it. Okay, we'll get, we'll get to you next week. And then next week would turn into next month. And then we were talking like two or three months. I think uh, the last covers I did for them and the reason they were the last covers I did for them, uh, because of the amount of time it took to get paid, it, it took me like four or five months to get paid. And that was with an agent hounding them. Very, very weird. Uh, so I knew something was not right back then. And that was years ago. That was when they still cared somewhat about publishing comic books. But we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the kind of the state of comic book publishing yet again because it keeps coming up again and again and again. I think we're going to see a shakeout of smaller publishers like IDW, like Oni Press. Uh, I think they're probably going to go out of business here pretty soon because they just decided, hey, we don't want to do comics. We want, want bigger and better things. And when that didn't work out, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? You can't go back after you basically told your audience you don't want them anymore, uh, which IDW did in, in many, many instances they did. So let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, go out to clownfishtv.com for more objective pop culture news, including comic book news. And speaking of comic books, I'm going to bring this up because it's completely related uh, to what we're going to talk about. Go out to shopclownfish.com. Uh, you can still pre-order, or it actually is a second chance offer for Crimson Wren and previously on Clownfish TV. We are shipping the Crimson Wren books currently. They came in last week. Uh, we're busy shipping those out to you. Now, these books uh, on the second chance offer are not going to ship out until October. We want to make sure that all the Indiegogo backers and all the Kickstarter backers get their books first because that's that's totally fair. But I think we're going to be doing more through our website, uh, doing more pre-sales through our website. It just seems like that is that is the way to go. Um, you know, it kind of cuts out diamond too, doesn't it? Like you can just you can just sell through your website. I need to come up with a system for retailers to order books too. Maybe we'll we'll look into that. They can order books directly from us. But these two books, if you missed out, uh, go to shopclownfish.com and uh, Crimson Wren. Yeah, we got back from the printer and it was delayed several months, but by God, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful book. It's a beautiful book. Um, so you definitely want to check these out. So we're going to talk about that because, and I got to give a hat tip to RGE News. Um, they actually passed on Crimson Wren and Shadowbinders at IDW back in the day. Now this was years ago. This was like 2013, 2014, uh, somewhere back then, but we were actually looking to 
reboot Shadowbinders as a like a proper graphic novel series, a proper comic book series, because you know we we'd gotten a lot of traction on the internet. It was pretty popular uh, as a web comic, and uh, we had a lot of interest from different parties. And uh, we actually went to IDW. Our agent went to IDW, and I had already had an in with them because I was doing work for them, and they told me at the time that they weren't interested in any more creator-owned comics. Now, this again, I, I'm trying to remember the time. I think it was like 2014, 2015 maybe. But they said they weren't doing creator-owned comics. And we saw that because they basically doubled and tripled down on IP, on uh, licensed properties. And they've done well with, with some of those. But the problem with that is you don't own anything. And we're seeing this bite them right now where license holders like Hasbro are pulling their licenses away from IDW and that makes up the bulk of their revenue. They don't have anything. They had a, a somewhat profitable games division, but again, those games were not original IP. They weren't developed in-house. Uh, most of them were not even creator-owned. It was you know, Ninja Turtles and I think they did Ghostbusters and G.I. Joe and some other stuff, right? Again, once the license holders pull, there's nothing you can do with it. And even if you're paying for that license, in a lot of cases, the licensing uh, agreement is, is, you know, as such that you're not going to make a lot of money. You know, they're going to get the lion's share of the money, especially if you're only selling three to 5,000 issues of a comic, which in some cases IDW was. The reason that the G.I. Joe comics were canceled originally was that they were not selling very well because they had poisoned the well. Uh, one of their writers said some dumb stuff on Twitter and it blew up into a big deal on a G.I. Joe forum and a lot of conservative G.I. Joe fans boycotted the book. The sales crashed. <laughs> they almost lost the license back then from what I understand. And, um, you know, so it, it's, yeah, you're not going to make probably not going to make a lot of money off of these books. And, uh, if they haven't lost the licenses to, to Sonic and Ninja Turtles yet, yeah, I'm expecting full expecting that to happen pretty soon because Hasbro was, was definitely their, uh, their meal ticket. And they lost all that stuff to Skybound, as I understand it. So let's talk about where they're at right now. So IDW, and we've talked before that they are losing money, massive, massive, massive amounts of money. And uh, they knew that they were going to lose these licenses on top of everything else. They spent tons of money uh, producing Netflix and Hulu pilots. And the only one that had any traction that I can recall was Lock and Key. And it was very lukewarm. Like it, it, it did okay, but they were expecting it to be a Stranger Things type hit. And that was, that was not the case. Uh, I actually thought it was pretty boring compared to the comic. I watched the first like two or three episodes of it. And I'm like, eh. You know, I'm not really invested, and uh, I think a lot of other people felt the felt the same way too. But a couple of years ago, they said that uh, they were going to revisit doing creator owned comics, which I thought was very very interesting, given their uh, kind of anti creator attitude. A couple of years ago, they brought in uh, Nachi Nachi Marsham, and uh, Mr. Marsham is no longer there. He was only there for like a year or two. And uh, he got laid off. So, God, they couldn't even finish the walls. Is this, is this, I, I'm just saying, this, is this an aesthetic choice or could they literally not afford to finish uh, paying the walls at IDW? But yeah, he got laid off along with a lot of, uh, a lot of other staffers and uh, they've just been collapsing. Like I am shocked that this publisher is still in business and they've changed management and this seems to be a Hail Mary pass, but they want to, they want to do more in-house properties. They needed uh, to go back 10 years, 10 years and green light other books. I, I can't believe that uh, our books were the only books that they were pitched, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. They said, yeah, we're not doing creator own anything really. We're just not interested right now. So that's what you get. That's what you get. Um, meanwhile, uh, Crimson Wren went on to do six figures uh, plus, that's just on Indiegogo. We also took pre-orders for it through our website, and we did a round on Kickstarter. And uh, yeah, the reception's been pretty good. Shadowbinders, same thing. We did uh, between doing a reoffer of our uh, pre-existing books, which collected the the webcomic version of Shadowbinders, and our, our pre-orders through our site, we did well over a hundred thousand dollars in pre-orders. 
And uh, that's just us. <laughs> that's just us promoting it on YouTube. You know, uh, they could have probably done more with it, maybe. I don't know, but uh, we'll never know. And it's probably for the best because this company is is definitely on its way out. So this uh, interview from ICV2, again, uh, hat tip to RGE News. Thank you very much. I, I missed this. Uh, ICV2 interview, IDW co-publishers, co-publishers, Mark Doyle and Tara McCrillis on changes under new management, retailer relationships, and key initiatives. Key initiatives. Uh, ICV2 says, and you know, they're a legit news source, but you can tell they're kind of like, hey, what's your plan, fam? You got a plan? I don't think you have a plan. We don't think none of us at any of these comic book news websites think you guys have a plan. This is basically a three-month check-in since the change in management. Uh, what's changing in terms of IDW output going forward, if anything? The number of releases and also any new initiatives or changes. Mark Doyle says, currently nothing is changing in terms of the 23 publishing plan. We have a strategy that takes us out into 25 and even early 26 at this point. Oh, don't worry, Mark. I don't think you'll be in business by then. I'd be very surprised. Of course, you know, I said that a couple of years ago and here they are. They're like damn cockroaches. I swear. I swear. Nothing changing in that regard, but certainly trying to double down on the books that we do have left and the talent that we do have left, making sure that we're giving them the best platform and putting them forward into the right places and trying to reach new audiences as well. How? How? Where? They're also pissing off Star Trek fans, too, from what I, I understand. The big, the big focus, this is coming from ICV2, the big focus is on originals, right? With a reduced focus compared to a few years ago on licensed. Is that ratio going to stay about the same going forward? Yeah, we don't have a number in terms of a target, but we certainly want a balance of licensed and originals. When we came in yesterday and Wednesday, some of the top priority meetings I wanted to have were with a lot of our licensed partners because they're so important to us. <laughs> All the ones that we have left. We had a tremendous success with things like Turtles and uh, Sonic is a continued success for us. Yeah, Sonic sells pretty well. Turtles sells pretty well. Then Star Trek. We're so happy with Star Trek, with getting the Eisner nomination and frankly seeing sales go up, which kind of never happens in comics. That's due to the strength of the material. That's the word of mouth that's happening in the business right now. That's how it happens. The book is good, is it? I don't know. I've heard a lot of complaints. I, I don't read their Star Trek comics. Uh, I've heard people complaining about a lot of, like Star Trek fans are very particular when it comes to ship designs and uniforms and continuity and all of that jazz. Uh, well, now Star Trek is all about jazz because they're doing musical numbers and shit. But, but yeah, I've heard that uh, some people had issues with the comics that they, they were getting very... Uh, very simple details wrong. Uh, one of these things, uh, Davidi, is it Davidi? Davidi talked about was trying to reinforce retailer relationships, which is our audience. Have you seen any manifestation of that desire? We have, we have hired a great direct market sales rep. Why? He's doing an incredible job. We have increased our outreach to retailers. We're focusing on promo items. Why are... We want to reach a new audience, but we're going we're gonna to double down on the dying direct market. That's fantastic. Uh, that is fantastic. Going back to publishing, Davidi, I guess it's Davidi. Davidi was talking about top shelf books and some opportunities, anything new to talk about. We, I'm surprised top shelf is still around. We do have some exciting things coming up. I'm not ready to announce yet. Uh, what are IDW's key publishing initiatives for the rest of the year? This is where it gets interesting. Leaning into our licensing as much as we can getting as much as we can out of that, letting the fans have what they want, but also pushing our originals. We've got some big talent coming up, some great stories to be told, so a nice balance. Th that is nothing. <laughs> what are you saying? We've got some exciting things coming up for our fans, both licensed and originals. That's our plan. Some exciting things. You don't have a plan. Uh, this is Doyle. Exactly. A good balance. I'm glad you gave a shout out to Originals. We just announced three new projects uh, with Scott Snyder, uh, Dark Spaces, etc. We announced a book called Beneath the Trees. Okay, there we go. We've got some specifics. Uh, that being said, are any of these going to sell enough to make up for you know Transformers, G.I. Joe, you know, your entire games division? Um, there's nothing going on. There's really nothing going on. They don't have a plan. IDW has no plan. 
I mean, that's my takeaway from this. It's just a bunch of fluff. It's basically like, hey, guys, hey, guys, we still exist. And it's always darkest before dawn. It's always darkest. We still exist. We're publishing some stuff, uh, some brand new stuff that nobody's heard of. We're reaching out to the direct market, even though comic shops are closing. Uh, things are going to be fine. We don't have any Netflix deals. and talk anything about Netflix or Hulu or any of that stuff. I mean, how, how are you going to? There's a strike going on. None of this stuff is getting greenlit anymore. And we're going to have a video coming up later today talking about uh, how all these animation deals are drying up too for people. Like it's over. Like this whole run of like, make your comic, make it as a, a, a blueprint, as a pitch for Hollywood, get your show picked up by whatever streamers dumb enough to throw buckets of money at you, you know, and if it fails, it's their problem. That's over. It's all over. Uh, I personally do not expect IDW to be in business for much longer, or they're going to get bought up by another company. And I think the only reason they haven't been because we saw Embracer Group bought up Dark Horse. The only reason I think IDW has not been acquired by someone like Embracer Group is because they don't have any original IP that's worth anything. They basically position themselves as a publisher that does licensed stuff, and anybody can do that. And, uh, you know, they were trying to, to be the ones that were going to get the Disney license to do the Marvel books and all of that, and they dropped the ball on that. They royally fuck that deal up, right? As I understand it. So they really don't have a lot left going for them. I think this is just end stage IDW. And it's indicative of what's going to happen to a lot of the B and C list publishers in the direct market. If they do not evolve into something else, they are not going to survive. Uh, meanwhile, go out and buy our comics. Go out and buy our comics at shopclownfish.com. We'll talk later. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.